Hello everyone and welcome back to the CompTIA A+ 1101 and 1102 review question series. In this video I'll be going over the review questions on chapter 19. And this chapter covers troubleshooting operating systems and security. Alrighty, just remember to pause in between the videos in between you know each question I'll try to do a little pause myself so I can show the correct answer alrighty let's get into this question number one says in Windows which utility is responsible for finding and downloading and installing Windows patches a device manager B Microsoft Management Console C Download Manager D Windows Update The answer here is D Windows Update Windows Update is responsible for downloading and installing Windows service packs patches and security updates Device managers use to view devices installed on the operating system. And the Microsoft Management Console is a console that allows snap-ins to be added for management. Now, Download Manager is a component of the Internet Explorer. Question number two. Which startup setting option allows you to boot with basic drivers? A. Enable debugging. B enable safe boot, C disable driver signature enforcement, D enable low resolution video. The answer here is B enable safe boot. Enable safe boot with the MS config utility allows you to boot with basic drivers and minimal startup of non-essential services. Enable debugging is used by kernel developers. Disable driver signature enforcement is used to allow un unsigned driver to load during boot. Now enable low resolution video will boot the operating system into VGA mode. Question number three. Which boot rec option can be used in Windows to rebuild the boot configuration file a forward slash fix boot b forward slash rebuild bcd c scan scan os d fix mbr the answer here is b rebuild bcd so this can be used with the boot rack tool to rebuild the boot configuration data the fixed boot option requires a new boot sector to the system partition. The scan OS option allows scans all other partitions that are found to have Windows installations and the fixed MBR writes a new master boot record to the partition. Question number four. What is the first step in mal malware removal? A. Quarantine the infected system. B. Identify and verify the malware symptoms. C. Remediate the infected system. D. Educate the end user. The answer here is B. Identify and verify the malware system symptoms. Sorry. <clears throat> so the most important first step to do is identifying and verifying the malware symptoms. You should quarantine the infected system once you have verified it's infected. So you have to make sure that you find out what kind of symptoms it has, how that malware is infecting that PC or system, and then you'll have to quarantine it. Remedi uh, remediating the infected system happens after you disable system restore. Education of the end user is the last step to malware removal. Of course, if a 
<clears throat> staff member or someone you know is infected with um or has their PC infected with malware you will follow these steps and of course at the end you'll have to end educate the user on how to you know not click on suspicious suspicious links or not to download anything that they don't know or not download an app or application from like a third party that is not really secure. Question number five, which tool will allow you to troubleshoot a slow loading profile? A, profile tab of the advanced system properties. B, reg edit. C, windows recovery environment. D, windows pre-installation environment. The answer here is A. So the profile tab of the advanced system properties dialog box allows you to view the total size of local or remote profile. Reg edit in the Windows environment will not aid in troubleshooting a slow loaded profile. Windows pre-installation environment is the mini Windows version used for installation of Windows. Question number six, which of the following components are only used to restore windows from a suspended state? A, B, C, D, B, NTOS kernel.exe, C, winload.exe, D, winresume.exe. The answer here is D, winresume.exe. So this is used to load windows from a suspended state. The boot configuration data, BCD, is used to direct windows to, the, to boot the proper installation. NTOS kernel.exe is the windows kernel and winload is used for the normal booting of the windows operating system. Question number seven says, one of the users you support has a Windows 10 slash 11 laptop that will not boot. The user just installed brand new drivers for a graphics card. They need to access a tax application and the, their data files. What should you try first? A. Use System Restore. B. Reset this PC. C. Reimage the laptop. D. Manually install Windows 10. The answer here is A, use system restore. The system restore option should be used first to restore the operating systems at an earlier point before the problem. This will restore the device back to the previous state before the installation of the drivers. Now system restore will not affect user data files. <clears throat> to, if you reset the PC back to factory default, it will re of course, it will just reset the PC before the tax application was installed. Reimagine the laptop will erase all programs and data files. Manually reinstalling Windows 10 will erase all programs and data files. So system restores is basically rolling it back into a previous state where you haven't really done what you did in the first place. Question number eight. Which partitioning type is required when you use UEFI firmware? A. GPT B. MBR C. Post D. Boot Sector The answer here is A. GPT When you have UEFI firmware, you must have the disk set up with a GUID partition table. The standard master boot record partition type can be used with BIOS, power power on self post. I mean power on self test, which is post, is a routine the BIOS or firmware performs to test hardware before boot. The boot sector is contained on both on both MBR and GPT partition types. 
Question number nine. Which of the following are used to prevent pup unders from appearing? A. Anti malware utilities. B. Pop up blockers. C. Phishing sites. D. Antivirus software. That will be C. Phishing sites. Pop-up blockers are used to prevent pop-ups and pop-unders from appearing. Anti-malware utilities will remove and prevent malware. Phishing sites are used to collect users' credentials by tricking them. And antivirus software is used to protect the operating system from viruses. Question number 10. In general, how often should you update your antivirus definitions? A. Weekly, B. Monthly, C. Daily. D. Antivirus definitions do not need to be updated. The answer here is C. <clears throat> Sorry. Daily. So, antivirus definitions should be updated daily because new viruses are identified by the minute. Question 11. Which tool can be used to diagnose why Windows 10 slash 11 is slow and sluggish? A. Resource Monitor B. MSconfig.exe C. Device Manager D. Reliability Monitor The answer here is A. Resource Monitor So, Resource Monitor can be used to identify slow and sluggish performance as well as identify the source of the problem. Demosconfig.exe tool can be used to enable or disable services on startup, startup and launch tools, but it cannot be used to diagnose performance issues. The device manager, MMC, can be used to view and modify devices, but it will not help with that to diagnose performance problems. Real Reliability monitor will display the reliability of the operating system, but it will not help diagnose problems. Question number 12. Which tool will allow you to diagnose why Windows Update keeps failing? A. NTBT log.txt B. Windows Update Troubleshooter C. Windows Recovery Environment D. Safe Mode so which of these would tell you or help you diagnose why Windows Update keeps failing? The answer here is B, Windows Update Troubleshooter. So of course, <clears throat> Windows has its multiple troubleshooters. So of course, for the Windows Update, there's a troubleshooter. So it can assist in diagnosing problems with the Windows Update. The ntbt log.txt file is used to diagnose problems with boot, boot up. <clears throat> the Windows recovery environment is used to solve problems with Windows and is not used with you know to find out problems with Windows updates. Safe mode safe mode is a boot mode that loads minimal drivers and services. Question number 13. Which of the following programs could be considered anti-malware? A. Microsoft Defender Security B. NDM C. Windows Action Center D. Virus Total The answer here is A. Microsoft Defender Security So Microsoft Defender Security is considered anti-malware and antivirus protection for the Windows operating system. Mobile device management MDM software is used to manage mobile devices. Windows Action Center is a no notification center for action to be taken in the operating system. Virus Total is a third-party site that analyzes virus signatures but it does not protect you from them. Question number 14. Which of the following tools allow you to manually fix maliciously 
modify system files. A, reg edit, B, SFC, C, boot rec, D, UAC. The answer here is SFC. SFC stands for System File Checker and it allows you to manually scan for modify operating system files and repair them. Reg Edit is used to modify the registry. Boot Rec is used to repair the boot records on an operating system installation. User Account Control is used to control access to administrative credentials. Question number 15. Which of the following can you do to help eliminate security problems? Select the best answer. A. Establish security policies and procedures. B. Optimize drive. C. Prevent booting into safe mode. D. Prevent booting into Windows recovery environment. The answer here is A. Establish security policies and procedures. So this will help eliminate security problems and guide employees on what to do if they arise. Optimizing drives will def defragment drives and has no effect on security. Preventing booting into safe mode will only hinder diagnostics. And then the other one will do the same thing. Question number 16. A mobile device is running out of RAM. What could be the most likely problem? A. The device is not charged to capacity. B. The digitizer is not functioning properly. C. The device is in DND mode. D. The device has background applications open. So why would your mobile device be running out of RAM? The answer is simply D. There's multiple applications open in the background. So that tends to slow down the phone and the RAM to run out. Well, not necessarily slow it down, but just the RAM. You know, because RAM helps things speed up. Question number 17. What is the risk of using the auto reconnect feature on a mobile device? A. The device will reconnect to any SSID. The device could be exploited by an evil twin attack. C. The device battery life should be could be shortened. D. You may exceed your cellular data plan limit. The answer here is B. The device could be exploited by an evil twin attack. So if you auto reconnect is configured on SSID, the device could be susceptible to an evil twin attack in which the device connects to any, any of the device with the same SSID. The device will not reconnect to, to any SSID but only to the SSID configured as auto reconnect. Question number 18. You notice that the reliability of the operating system has diminished in reliability monitor. Where can you find more details on why applications are failing? A. Device Manager B. Event Viewer C. Windows Recovery Environment D. msconfig.exe The answer here is B. Event Viewer Event Viewer will allow you to see more detailed information on why programs have crashed. The Event Viewer logs may not give the exact reason, but they will aid and understand the root cause. Device manager really doesn't have to do anything here. So forth. Question number 19. Why would the operating system write out large amounts of RAM to the page file? A. The CPU is running high on utilization. utilization. B. This is a normal process of the operating system. C. The amount of physical RAM is low. D. The page file is faster than conventional RAM.
The answer here is C. The amount of physical RAM is slow. The reason that the operating system will write out large amounts of RAM to the page file is that the system is running low on physical RAM and is attempting to free up physical RAM. Question number 20. What is one consequence of an overheating mobile device? A. Higher RAM users usage. D. Degraded battery life. C. Inaccurate touchscreen response. D. Inability to decrypt emails. That has nothing to do with overheating. The answer here is degraded battery life. Degraded battery life can be expected from overheating mobile device if the problem persists for a long time. That will be the only answer here. The other ones will not really, don't really count towards this. But this is the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching. And of course, be on the lookout for the other videos. I think there's three more after this. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any comments with any questions below in the comments thank you